I have a new sort of device uh, to review today, thanks to IT Solution who supplied me this uh, review sample free of charge. And this is the Sonoff POW or um, a, a power consumption measurement unit. Uh, I have to admit I don't really know what POW stands for. But um, this looks like one of the, um, just like any of the usual Sonoff devices, so it comes in the new box. And uh, the features are very similar to the uh, basic Sonoff switch. The only difference is that whilst you can turn any device on and off, whilst the device is on, you can measure the, the, the power which is being drawn by the unit and you can also measure that over time. If you are interested in purchasing this device, I will link some purchasing links in the video description. Um, IT has a store in the uh, in Amazon, so I'm going to link uh, the leave the link to the to the Amazon store below. Some of their products sometimes they goes out of stock, so if you are interested, uh, you can either go back to their uh, on site to purchase it, or just wait a little bit until they get restocked and they appear in the Amazon store. At first glance, this unit looks like just like any of the other units. Um, obviously the, the label is somewhat different because it says uh, the POW and I am not entirely sure but um, well actually actually I'm sure because I just looked at my TH10 but um, even though it comes in the same box the internals are obviously somewhat different and what's most important there is the the connections are somewhat different so always take a note of the of the labels below because sometimes the input and the outputs <coughs> uh, are not the same in like a POW or, or a TH10 or a basic Sonoff or for example the G1 that I'm going to review uh, later on but um, in essence it's the same plastic box it even has the holes which is used by the TH10 and you have some mounting brackets one on the top and one in the sort of in the middle <coughs> And this cover comes up, uh, comes off to reveal the the uh, terminals. Um, other than that, in the box, well, other than the device, you just uh, uh, well, I get the box that it comes in, and you have the basic um, uh, information on the box. What's important? This is a, like a 16 amp um, device, or it has a 16 amp relay, so in theory, it can uh, control anything up to three and a half kilowatts. And you get the QR code for the different applications, and and that's pretty much it. After unscrewing the front cover, we see the same kind of spring-loaded terminals here. So you just push this in, <coughs> and you can insert the the wire all the way through. Just make sure that you have pushed the wire all the way through; it doesn't come off. And again, we have um, the live input the two neutrals, the two earth connection and the live output. And you can see the, the earth and the neutral connections are always closer to each other than the live which is a little bit spatially separated. So it's uh, um, easy to know which one, uh, which of the two terminals go together. I'm not going to open up the case because there is nothing really inside that needs to be changed or looked at. It only needs to be wired and then connected to the um, EV Link application. Unlike the uh, TH10 and the touch that I have mounted on a, like a test board, I decided to, um, to use the PoE in, in, um, uh, in this installation where I just took a P, uh, two pieces of wire connected up to the input and the output terminals and then one has a plug and the other one has a socket and I'm going to use this as a power measuring device because uh, that's the, probably the whole purpose of this. I th it can be, obviously it can be used to turn any device on and off but um, you and then probably most of us are, are also has uh, like a power consumption unit that you can you know uh, use to measure um, the actual power output of any device and most of these units also have some functionality to um, to measure the kilowatt hours consumption used over time um, but I think it's it's uh, this particular device is quite useful especially for places where it's hidden away or in a room which you forget to uh, to um, check the reading. So in this case you just install this unit and then you check the power consumption uh, over the phone and we will see that that consumption is nicely broken down into uh, like days or weeks or months so you can see how a particular device is being used uh, over a period of time. I have already set up the unit or added my unit to the EV Link application but adding this to the to the application works exactly the same way as any other sort of device. So you click on the new button you select this first option which is the like any normal wireless uh, sorry Wi-Fi device you uh, push the button um, 
on the device for five seconds until you get this blink pattern and then you follow the on-screen instructions. I had some issues adding um, Sono devices to my application on, um, on my Android phone but this one worked really really fast so the IT must have done something to the application so it, it, it works much better with the pairing. I had no issues with iOS, Android was somewhat uh, a little bit difficult. But that's how it looks um, uh, in the application after all. So you see that you have the, uh, the POW, I just named it your POW. Uh, the icon is somewhat different, you can see like a plug one and then you click on it and then the, the lamp comes, uh, so the, uh, the switch uh, turns on. Um, at the moment it's connected to a lamp and then after a few seconds you can see the power consumption uh, coming on and sort of you can see that you get a, an update of every I don't know like what is it two to three seconds something like that um, so it's like a big um, I think infrared lamp which I have connected so it draws quite a bit of a power and then you can obviously turn it off and then after a couple of seconds you will see that the current consumption then goes back to zero. It's a nice feature that you can see the whole thing um, on the front screen as well and also on the detailed screen. I don't know why the current... okay now the current power goes by, uh, down to zero. Um, and it goes up to 125 even though it's switched off. Anyway, what you can see on the screen is like the, the top part or the, the bottom part with the three buttons here are same as any other device and also the top part is always uh, of course the same so you have the middle button to control the uh, the output or the relay state so at the moment it's again turned on it seems to update the current power now and then on the left you have a stopwatch where you basically you you, you click on start and then it starts counting uh, the kilowatt hours being used and when you stop it stops so you can see that I have done between I've, I've run it for like you know two days and at the moment it, this um, uh, POW was connected up to the washing machine so it probably you know measured a couple of washing cycles so I know that's it consumed 2.64 uh, kilowatt hours so um, this is a nice feature to measure a random uh, interval, time interval and the consumption within that time interval. Uh, but once you come to the left side you can uh, you can see this other icon which looks like an arrow then you can see the consumption in a graph which is again a nice uh, feature so um, it is called the electricity record and you see the consumption based by date so um, on the first it was one point uh, so the first of what month it is August it was the you know 1.8 kilowatt hours and then the second day was like point something five and um, so it just shows every day of the month again this was the washing machine so yeah you can see which days we run the washing machine and probably how many cycles based on the height of the graph um, and then if you click on um, on one of the uh, um, bars then it gets highlighted and you can see the consumption as well but um, I think it's not really good because for example if I click on this one if I manage to hold my finger there so it shows like one but it's, it's it must be a rounded number because it's more like you know 0.5 or and this one oh Jesus so it's not yeah easy so that's 0.8 which gets rounded up to two and this one the second day is it must be some somewhat less and it shows zero so that must be below 0.5 so it's a little bit annoying that it doesn't show the uh, uh, the decimals because you have to have some really high consumptions to make you know to use uh, I don't know tens of kilowatt hours per day that's I think it's a slightly unrealistic in the um, in household scenarios I haven't done the math I don't know how much is it like 3500 was for 24 hours but it can't, I can't imagine that would be a lot so that's the that's the basic view you get the consumption for the particular month or the uh, the current month and then you also see that uh, my consumption in July was 2.16 kilowatt hours the uh, consumption in August so far is 11.91 kilowatt hours and by the way if you click on June you can cycle back any month and I have this device or this device up and running for the last two weeks so I don't have more history but in theory you can go back in time maybe you can go all the way back to when the unit was um, I don't know why it goes, doesn't go any uh, more 
before Jan or May, but anyway, it's not really a problem at this point. So obviously, whenever you have some readings, you would have the uh, the scale on the left. Otherwise, it's a completely empty uh, chart. And then again, uh, clicking on the month on here, I can just you know cycle forward by one month. Um, there is no export functionality or there is no numbers or anything. So this is what you get on the screen, uh, pretty much. So in terms of measurement, you have uh, uh, pretty much three options. The actual power, which is visible on the screen here, and it's also visible on the, on the front screen, on the device list screen. Um, you have the timer to measure um, power used in, a, in any given interval or any uh, random interval. Um, and you have the uh, electricity consumption broken down by day. Besides this, the rest of the functionality is exactly the same that you see for any other devices. So you can share the device to a different user, you can set up schedules, so um, days of the week or any particular uh, date when the device should turn on or it should turn off. So it's, um, and you can have up to eight of these. Uh, just like in any other device, any other sort of device, you have the timer, so you can come here and, and click here to say that, um, you know, turn off my device after like, you know, 10 minutes or turn on the device after 10 minutes. And if you come to the top, you have the loop timer as well, which works exactly the same as um, any other uh, sort of device. So this particular setting would create a 10 a minute uh, loop in which the first five minutes is in on state, the second five minutes in off state, and the whole cycle starts in this uh, on this date and time exactly. So I'm not going to set this one. Besides this, if you come to the settings, you s you have pretty much the same features as um, any other device. Um, so you can rename the device you have. Um, that's the current firmware, firmware version. And by the way, the the device when I got it like about a month ago. It has an older, it had an older firmware, so it uh, automatically updated to the new one. Um, um, these two um, options are for the application, and uh, and also you get the power on state, which I think it's 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 quite useful. So um, which means that when you power this device on, it will come, um, you know, start up in an on state, uh, or an off state, or keep the the last state, and I think that's that's. Um, especially useful if you are planning to use this device as like a generic measurement device where you're not going to switch it just you know plug it in it automatically comes on and it's going to measure whatever device is connected to it and if you unplug move it to another place it will again come on i mean it would you know uh, uh, turn the relay on so you don't you know forget to do it in the app uh, manually every time you restart or the power goes off yep and so that was the device configuration you can delete um, the uh, this device from your um, account, and then last you have this history, um, operation history, or basically the last few activities you have done. And this was me pretty much playing, playing around with it. So, um, and this last device item was um, me pushing, physically pushing the button on the on the device. Um, by the way, you have probably seen from the previous video, and that's uh, true for any of the new sort of devices, that you have a blue LED, which flashes when it's connecting, and it, it stays on when it's connected to the network, and then also there is a red LED, which um, uh, mirrors the state of the relay. So it comes on red when the relay is on. Um, but that would be pretty much it. Oh, okay, one more thing, which I was really looking forward uh, to do, um, but I was a little bit disappointed at this point. So, um, if you have watched my TH10 video, you know that I've um, spent some time explaining how the uh, skin scenes, sorry, scenes work, and I thought that you know with a new device which does measurement, I will be able to set up some new scenes. So I just came here and as I I wanted to create a scene which let's say if the power consumption goes above. Um, let's say 100 watts, then, you know, turn on another son of device, which would, let's say, um, connect it to like a notification light or something like that. So I came here and I said, okay, I have a new device, so I want to set up a new scene, so I want to set up a new trigger condition. So I click on plus, 
and um, unfortunately I still only have TH10 so even though I have a really nice device which can measure consumption they haven't enabled the functionality or they haven't added the functionality within the EVLink application to be able to set up scenes or trigger actions based on the energy consumption so I think that's a that's a re that would have been a really good opportunity and I I'm really hoping that that would be something that comes available in the next uh, next release or the next version of the application I don't think it's really the, the device which needs to do it, it's more like the application which needs to provide this functionality because I was thinking about like um, this would be a really good device um, hooking up your let's say pump to it so you turn on the pump and then you can set a scene that if the consumption goes above let's say you know more than 50% normally what the pump uh, draws then you turn it off because let's say there is a problem there is a mechanic mechanical fault um, something has gone in or the pump cannot draw water or it's running dry something like that so it would have been a really good safety feature for anything that you control via the POW and that the only way to do it based on you know how the apps work how the app works is would be the scenes so that would be something that I would be really looking forward to in the future other than that I'm quite happy with the device it's been working for quite a few months now uh, sorry quite a few weeks now it's been measuring uh, and I can always come here and I just usually just look at the stats and and have some sense of you know how much electricity I'm using on each particular device and I think that's a great uh, way of doing that and um, it's been some time since I checked it but I think the POW costs like two basic sonoffs or maybe uh, two and a half so it's not a huge additional investment to have uh, this additional functionality which could be really really useful I hope you like this video and you find it really really useful I have a few more son of devices and probably there's going to be even more in the future so if you are interested in, in this ecosystem then definitely stay tuned subscribe and you will be notified of any future videos thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video